To get some extra functionality out of PowerPoint, we can add some extra tabs along the ribbon. The one we're going to look at today is Microsoft Mouse Mischief, which uses a multiple mouse scenario where we can have a large number of mice all connected to the same computer. So this is useful in a classroom where we want to have some game scenarios. We'll look at how we can do this. Now the configuration for this can be with wireless mice or it can be with cabled mice or a combination of the two. Depending on the speed and power of your computer, the number of mice can become a factor. I've generally found that working with six to seven mice is probably the best and you can then configure your class in terms of groups, sharing the mice around or working in a small group scenario. The Microsoft Multiple Mouse or Mouse Mischief is a download, a free download from the Microsoft web page. Once you've downloaded it and installed it, you will have a new tab along your ribbon here. You get new slide, yes and no, multiple choice and drawing buttons which you can use. Uh, you can position certain parts and align the answers. You play the slideshow. There's a guided tool which helps you and a uh, help and how to. Uh, it's quite well supported and there are lots of very good uh, demonstration programs that you can get from their website to have a look at. So let's quickly have a look at what's going to happen here. With the set of buttons, we can choose a yes or no type question. This will give a number of 1 and 2 with a label beside it of yes and no. We cannot change that label. If you want to have true or false, then you'll use the multiple choice and select two choices. And then you can write whatever you like, true, false, uh, on, off, whatever, uh, as the pair of choices. And of course you can have uh, multiple choices, up to 10 is available with this particular program. The final one is a drawing one which we'll look at briefly but I wouldn't recommend using too much. I found that becomes quite difficult with the children to try and work with. So we create a slide uh, in this case I've got a slide saying is this an open-ended question and we decide whether it is uh, correct or not we put a tick on that now that's by using this assign answer and here I've chosen number two I could cho choose number one and we'll change it we'll come back to two or there can be no actual answer we don't actually have to have a declared answer this is the yes and no format two choices if we want to have our own words there instead of yes and no uh, it's quite simple we use the multiple choice and just select two options from the multiple choice now you see I've put these on the right I've used uh, the position to move it to the right now the reason that I've done that is that when you are playing with this you find that the mice uh, appear in the same position they were last and therefore we want children to be able to move the mouse to the next location rather than having them all crammed over where it was that they last were working. Let's move down, we'll just scroll down and have a look at some more of these and here I've got four choices. Now in this particular case I've got a question what's this and we're getting the uh, selection of a, a word there are lots of different question formats that you could create. Uh, we can have the maths coming through or we can have a look at uh, perhaps a spoken clue uh, or uh, one that is read and the selection is done on the basis of pictures uh, so that vocabulary or literacy is perhaps not as much of a problem. So you can see there's a number of different questions that I've created here with answers uh, and it moves on, uh, I've changed the format, it moves around and we have uh, finally one here which is going to use the drawing tool in which they select a colour and will try and find or highlight a particular word in this word search. Let's look at and see how this actually works in practice. So I'm going to start the slideshow. We come to our start screen and the first thing the teacher must do is to declare which is the teacher's mouse and you can see I've got a number of different mice here. Um, I'm going to select this one here as my teacher's one so I have to make sure it's the only one in the orange square 
and then I press enter on my keyboard and it's now turned into the teachers um, pointer and we're going to use the individual mode this is now the teachers control and it brings up a uh, an extra set down the bottom here let's uh, move forwards and backwards the rest of the mice are now waiting to be registered so uh, as I move a mouse around uh, I realize that this is the dinosaur mouse and the person who's using that has to realize that that's theirs because when they click here it will disappear it's now been registered for the game and this one is going to disappear now as I move it in and click in the center and register each of the mice that I have here at the moment now there are <coughs> actually sometimes more mice you can find declared depending on whether you've got a touchpad or some other things that are connected to your computer but you decide how many mice you actually want to have we've got enough there now so I find my teachers one again and I'm going to move on to the first question so this is a display question There's nothing much happening here if I just click my mouse nothing happens until I move to the next button although I can use the right arrow to move on this is a teaching uh, slide so there is no action here even though we can see the types of questions that we're going to come up with here's my first question and um, if I move my mouse out of the way uh, this uh, should disappear by itself which it has and now the different mice they can all be moving at the same time as you can see so it gets to be a bit of a messy screen especially when there are a number of them all operating at once and they're going to choose the, the answer they don't choose it by clicking on the words they have to click on the actual button that you find over here so is this an open question we'll click on no and as they click we'll say yes there as they click the mouse icon will disappear and my last one there and we find that the first answer was the ball we see that one was incorrect and four were correct because I declared the types of answers as being uh, correct or not we get to actually see a display here rather than just who or which numbers were the most popular let's move on to the next question and you see how all of the mice are still located over here which is why I recommend we always move the alignment across so that uh, all the mice are not sitting on top of the actual answers so the second question should always have the answers in a different position on the page what kind of question is this well it's a closed question so we'll go and click in, in here and try and get all of these mice to disappear for me find my last one there we go and we find that everybody's got it correct there okay but we do know who is the first person to be able to answer now we can actually uh, make that disappear and bring it back again and we can also restart the question so we have brought it all back in here and here as restarting they've all started up in the top corner so that's quite nice um, if we don't want to move and do that one again we can move on but we also have the ability to lock out to pause so here I've clicked on this and none of the mice are now actually moving when I click on that again uh, if you find that they're all active again sometimes you need to be able to do that what is this it's a triangle now I could actually click the answer myself as the teacher um, and that will also be registered although the teacher would not normally do so here we go and we find that the teacher got in first so you can actually be part of the competition as well we'll move on um, and we'll just keep moving through some of these you can see that uh, again I'm moving them around so that um, the position of the answers uh, varies from one to another let's go on to the final type which is where we're drawing with a color now in this case the children pick a color so they clicked here on red and then they will try and highlight what they're doing so they're perhaps doing that there and they're going to cross out horse because they have found horse and this one's going to pick up the uh, purpley color and you can see how this is going to get to be quite a messy sort of screen 
um, it's not one that I'd actually recommend using the drawing. There are a few uh, programs that you'll find that use the drawing tool. Uh, personally, I don't particularly like it. Here I've put the answers so that uh, we could compare. We could go back, but it resets the slide. Um, but we can actually see what the answers were, whether we got them all correct. And finally we have, did you enjoy, did you like Mouse Mischief? Yay! We all like that, so we're going to click on yes, go through, and have everybody finished. There is no correct answer for this, so you see that uh, it's just come up in black. Okay, and let's move on. That's the end, and my slide is completed. I can restart it or close, and I come back to where I've produced those. So let's just come to the very end here, and we're going to click on New Slide and Multiple Choice, and we're going to select 6, and you can see it's very simple. All I'm going to do is type my question here and put my answers in here, which can either be text or they can be pictures, tables, you choose what it is that you're actually wanting to insert. Uh, in most cases I found it's quite useful to be putting either a word or a small picture and let that to be the choice that the people are going to make. Remembering that they're not clicking on the object that's the answer, they have to click on the number down the side that is beside the answer. So a useful and interesting program that you can use with groups, quite exciting in the classroom. If you're going to use wireless mice, you need to be aware of the um, minor interference and lag problems that you can sometimes have. Uh, wireless mice should be uh, not Bluetooth mice. They need to be USB ones uh, in the 2.4 gigahertz range, it seems to be the, the recommendation. Uh, and you probably don't want to go above about 14 or 15 wireless mice in the same classroom because of uh, issues of interference. So a mixture of cabled ones and wireless ones is good, but uh, as a general rule of thumb I would stay a 7 port USB uh, adapter with up to 7 mice cabled or wireless connected is your best and most efficient use of Microsoft Mouse Mischief.